In this video, we will review how to transfer the 3D physical model of a pre-stressed girder bridge from Open Bridge Modeler to Leap Bridge Concrete for analysis and design. I will start by adding a new standalone group and naming it Module 9-LBC for Leap Bridge Concrete. I hit OK and I will launch Open Bridge Modeler. On the main page of OpenBridge Modeler with the workspace set to Imperial Standards and work set to OpenBridge Training, I will hit Browse and point to Module 9 Interoperability to select Precast Bridge DGM file. I hit Open. For the mismatch alert, I will select the second option to open the file in the active workspace and work set. And precast bridge DGM file opens with a straight to span pre-stressed girder bridge model inside it. To send this model to leap concrete in the utilities tab, I will select leap bridge concrete, send to option. And the data transfer information dialog box appears showing that data transfer was successful. Here with the model transfer report option enabled, I can review the assumptions made and limitations when sending the physical model to the analytical software. Now I will click OK to send the bridge to Leap Bridge Concrete. Leap Bridge Concrete opens with the Leap Bridge Concrete news window. I will close it and I click OK when prompted to confirm the successful data transfer. Inside Leap, I will first go to the Geometry tab and fit the view to see the bridge model. Some of the features are simplified as specified in the Model Transfer report. Next, in the Superstructure tab, I will click the Precast Press Dress Girder button and select the Geometry tab to edit the deck and hound properties. I will change the effective deck thickness to 8.5 inches and the sacrificial deck thickness to 1 inch. For hound thickness I will enter 2 inches and I will also enable the checkbox for auto set hound width. Moving on to the materials tab, I will change the concrete strength for girder to 7 ksi at release and 9 ksi at the final stage and select the pre-stressing tandem. After modifying the geometry and material information in LEAP, I will continue with the loads tab to define the permanent loads on the structure. The barrier loads are already populated. So I will select the wizard and in the permanent load wizard, I will keep the left and right barrier weights as 0.43 kips per foot and enter 0.025 KSF for future wearing surface. I click OK to accept the new superimposed dead loads and in the dialog box that pops up, I hit OK to replace the automatically generated loads for the barriers. Now that I have the loads defined, I will switch to the beam tab to perform the design of the beams. I will start with the design of the tendons. So here I click on strand pattern and I will use the auto design tool for the current beam. I hit OK. And the details of the design can be viewed on the right side of this window. So based on the design status at the top, the design strand pattern works fine, but the camber deflection at the mid span is a negative value. So I will modify the table to make changes in the strand layout. First, I will set the number of strands to 12 for the second row of tendons with an end height of 4 inches. 
Next, I will add a new row of straight tendons at an end height of 6 inches and select 8 strands. And finally, I will change the end height for the fourth row to 50 inches. And these changes will result in a positive camber at the mid span, but also require about one square inch of steel at the top flange of the beam. To copy this strand design to the rest of the beams, on both spans I will click on the copy to button and enable the checkboxes for all spans and all beams. I hit OK here and I will hit OK in the larger window to accept the strand design. Now I can select the other beams graphically to check if the design is sufficient. So I will go to the third, fourth, fifth beams. And once I make sure that they are all okay, I can switch back to the second beam of the first pan and continue with the rebar design. So I click on rebar pattern and here I will populate the auto design section for the stirrup so I key in 3 inches for the stirrup increment. The size will be US number 5M16 and with leg set to 2 I will hit the auto design button to start the process. In the transverse reinforcement design graph I can compare the reinforcement provided with the reinforcement required for shear design. And now I will make changes in the table to modify the starts and ends of beam segments with different stirrup spacing. So for the start of the beam with the dancer spacing of 3 inches near supports, the end value will be 6 feet. For the second row with 6 inch spacing, the start will be at 6 feet and end will be at 8 feet. For the third row of 9 inch spacing, I will set the start value to 8 feet and it will go up to 10 feet. For the fourth row with 12 inch spacing, start will be 10 and end will be 12 feet. And finally, for the midsection of the beam with 24 inch stirrup spacing, start will be at 12. For the end value, I will enter half length of the beam, which is approximately 55 feet. And now I will click the make symmetrical button to mirror the stirrups already defined in the left half of the beam to the right half. And here I click yes. And the graph for provided transverse reinforcement becomes symmetrical. Once I'm done with the design of stirrups, I will click on the copy to button to copy this information to all girders in all spans. So here I enable both checkboxes and hit OK. And next I will switch to the rebars in beam tab to satisfy the mild steel requirement for the top flange. I will add two rows to the table, one for the rebars at the start of the beam and one for the rebars at the end of the beam. So for the first row the number of bars will be 4, the rebar size will be US number 5 and 16. The rebar distance from top will be 2 inches. The rebars will start at 0 feet and end at 8 feet with a side cover of 3 inches. Moving on to the second row, only the start and end values will change. So for the start, I will enter 101.5 and end will be 109.5 for a total rebar length of 8 feet. Side cover will be the same. And again, I will click on the copy to button to copy the rebar information to all spans and all beams. I hit OK to close the rebar pattern window. And next I will select the strand pattern again to verify that top flange steel requirement is satisfied. Here the provided reinforcement is 1.24 inch squared which is greater than the required steel area of 0.903. So I can continue with this design. I will close the strand pattern window and then the precast press stress border window. 
I will select yes to update the leaf bridge concrete model. And click no in the generate reports prompt. The next step is saving the leaf bridge concrete file. And for that, I will go to file and save. Here I will key in the file name bridge01 and click OK. This will save the file to the OBDX file of OpenBridge Designer. Then I will go to Tools, OBM Sync and select Send to OBM. I want to save this XML file in the same folder as the DGM file to locate it easily in a future step. So I will go to Bentley Training Introduction to OpenBridge Modular Imperial Module 9 Interoperability folder and I will enter the file name LBC to OBM and click Save. I will click OK in the dialog box that says that the data transfer to OPM was successful. And now I can close Leap Bridge Concrete and go back to Open Bridge Modeler. So I click File and Exit. Continuing in Open Bridge Modeler, from the Open Bridge Modeler workflow, I will select the Utilities tab. And under interoperability, I will select Leap Bridge Concrete and update from Analytics tool. I will click on the LBC to OBM XML file created in the previous exercise and hit open to start the update process. In the changes for precast unit 1 window, I will select beam section from the element type column to review the changes to the beams. The changes are in the beam material table. Since I modified the concrete strength for girder at release and at final stage. And I will click accept all to accept all analytical model changes. And then click OK to update the physical model in OpenBridge Modeler. To see how the changes are reflected here, I will select one of the beams and review its properties to see the changes to the material properties. To select the beam, I will switch to the Home tab and click on the Element Selection tool. I will left click on one of the outer beams and click on Properties under the Primary group. Here I will check the material property for the first beam of the first band and the new material appears as new conch mat under line 1. Now I will close properties and go to reports and drawings to check the camber report. In the beam camber and deflections window I will enable the toggle read from LBC and the camber self deflection and additional deflection columns will be populated with the information transferred from the bridge concrete. I will select generate to open the preview window here and in the preview window I will click submit to generate the report. In this report, screed and girder top elevation and screed height above girder will be presented based on the information imported from the bridge concrete for camber, self deflection, and additional deflection. And I can use the document map to review the results for the different beams of the bridge. The camber and deflection information for each beam is shown at the top of each table. Now I will close print preview and exit the beam camber and deflections window. And next I will continue with the substructure design in Leap Concrete. And for that I will go back to OpenBridge Designer 
select bridge 01L BCX file and launch the bridge concrete. When Leap Bridge Concrete opens, I will switch to the Substructure tab to start the design of the substructure. And with Pier 1 highlighted, I will click on the Substructure button and open the Geometry tab to review and verify the Pier Geometry. Since I'm working in the standalone workflow, I can change the geometry and send that information back to OBM to update the 3D physical model of the structure, but I won't do that for this exercise. Next, I will click on the model button to review the line elements that represent the pier in the analytical model. Here I can enable the node number and model number toggles to see the numbering for the nodes and line elements. and I will close the model view and continue with assigning the substructure loads. So I switch to the loads tab. Here I will select loads from the load type window and push them to the selected loads using the arrow icon between the windows. So I will start with DC component and attachments. Next I will push DW wearing surfaces and utilities to the selected loads and finally I will push LL vehicular live load and impact to the right side. The next step will be editing the selected loads. So I will start with DC1. I will highlight it in the selected loads window and I will click edit. In the loads window, I will click on the generate button under auto generation. And from the auto load generation window, I will enable the radio button for read composite dead load reaction from superstructure and click read. The selected peer will change to one and I will hit generate. Point loads will be created for all bearings. And I will click OK to accept the generated DC1 load. Next, I will repeat the same process for DW1 load. I will select it in the selected loads window, click edit, then hit generate under auto generation. In the auto load generation window, I will enable the option for reading composite dead load reaction from superstructure, then click read and hit generate at the bottom to create the bearing loads. In the loads window, I will click OK to accept the generated DW1 loads. And finally, I will edit the LL1 load in the selected loads window. So I will highlight it and click edit. In the loads window, I will click generate and from the auto load generation window, I will select design tandem plus lane load. Click the add button to specify it as selected. Next, I will enable the generate breaking load cases checkbox and I will click generate at the bottom of the window to create the bearing loads for live load and breaking load cases and I will click OK to accept the generated load. This will result in a series of LL and BR loads in the selected loads window. To review the live load information for the LL1 load, I will click on the LL details button when the load is selected. And this will show the truck's position used for this load case in addition to the maximum effect in various members and nodes. I will close the live load generation details window and continue with the load combinations. 
So for the combinations, I will add strength group 1 and strength group 3 to the selected groups window. And next, I will hit the combinations button. And in the load combinations window, I will click on default comb to create the load combinations in accordance with the selected design specification. And I will close the window to continue with the analysis step. For the substructure analysis, I will select the analysis tab and here I will click on the AD parameters button to review the analysis and design parameters. And before moving forward with the analysis step, I will go to the shear and torsion calculations and select the use concurrent shear and torsion option and the simplified component shear method. I hit OK and now I can select run analysis. Once the analysis is done, the results will appear here in table form. I can change the type of result to view from this drop down list and the available items will change based on that choice. For the effect, I can select forces and moment or displacement and rotation. I can also click on the diagrams button at the top to review the diagrams for caps and columns. Now I will close the diagrams window and continue with peer design. I will start with the design of the cap beam, so I switch to the cap tab and here I will be using the auto design option. In the design dialog box, I will set the main bar size to US number 11 M36, stirrup size to US number 5 M16, number of legs to 4 and the stirrup increment to 6 inches. I will enable the toggle for full length of cap and click OK to run the cap design. Both flexure and shear design are performed and I can scroll through this report to see the details of the design. I will close the report now but I can always come back to it using the design status button. I can also review the rebar design in this window. Here I see the top and side views of the cap as well as the cross section and I can switch between the main bars and stirrups options to display the longitudinal and transverse reinforcement design in table form. I will continue with the design of the columns. So I select the column tab and enable the auto design all toggle to design all three columns at once. Now I will click on the auto design button in the design window. I will select bar sizes from US number 8 to US number 14. Lateral bar type will be ties. Tie spiral size will be US number 5 and 16 with the pitch set to 8 inches and I will hit OK to start the column design. When the design is complete, the enhanced report viewer appears showing the details of the design. I can scroll down to go through it. And if I close the report, I will see the reinforcement layout in elevation and section view and the table at the bottom shows the rebar design for the selected column and the selected rebar type, whether it is main bars or lateral bars. And here I can select the column to be displayed. Finally, to complete the peer design, I will select the footing tab and I have a single combined footing named FDG03 and I hit the auto design button. For the bar size for footing reinforcement, I will choose US number 11 and 36 and hit OK to start footing design. Again, I will review the design in the report that opens up. But in the pile reactions table, pile reaction values are all in red, meaning that the factored force in the pile is greater than the factored pile capacity. To fix this, I will need to go back to the geometry tab and specify the capacity of the piles. In this window, I can see the design results in graphical and table form. Now I will select the geometry tab and click on the footing pile button. In the footings window, I will choose FDG03 and hit edit. And in the window that opens up under piles definition, 
I will populate the pile shaft capacity section to define the capacity of the piles. So for the lateral resistance, I will key in 20 kips. For maximum service pile capacity, I will enter 150. And for maximum factored pile capacity, I will enter 180. I hit OK in both windows and go back to the footing tab to check the design status. I will go down to the pile reactions table to see the updated results. All piles are ok, none are marked in red and this finalizes the pier design. Now I can close the substructure window. Here I will select yes to update the lead bridge concrete model and no to the generate reports prompt. And I will select file, then save to save the leap concrete file with the LBCX extension. And next I will go to tools OBM sync sent to OBM to create the XML file to be opened in OpenBridge Modeler. I want to save this file in the same folder as the DGN. For the file name I will enter LBC to OBM peer one and I click save. Data transfer to OBM was successful, so now I can close LeapBridge. I go to File, Exit, and back in OpenBridge Modeler, I will open the Utilities tab. Here, select LeapBridge Concrete, Update from Analytics tool. I will choose the LBC to OBM Peer 1 XML file that I just created. Clicking Open will start the update process. I will toggle on import update rebars to model the footing reinforcement. Finally, I click accept all to accept all analytical model changes and OK to update the physical model in OpenBridge modeling.